Oh no, emission system problem on a 2016 Honda Pilot. 53,000 miles and we got some problems and I'm going to show you how to fix this. Stay tuned. My name is Pete and welcome to my garage. <laughs> plug in my trusty Bluetooth code reader. This one is the blue driver since I have an iPhone. It is connecting to the vehicle now. Going to read the codes. Okay, whatever. Alright, so we have a couple different codes here. Let's see if you can see that. Alright, we have a P0430, system efficiency below threshold, bank 2, and apparently a bank 2 air fuel ratio imbalance code, P219B. You can see that causing some problems there. Uh, also has a pending code for a cylinder 4 misfire detected. So I'm pretty sure that the uh, cylinder 4 fuel injector is causing our problem. It's kind of a known problem on these, uh, these Hondas here. So let's go ahead and uh, go replace our injectors. Alright, when you first pop the hood, um, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see uh, the Earth Dreams technology. Oh my goodness, I don't know what that means other than probably it has direct injection. Who knows? Uh, I'm not a Honda guy, I'm a GM guy, but it seems I've been working on a lot of imports lately. Uh, but, uh, just like any other car, they're all pretty much the same. So, let me go ahead and uh, let's start delving into this. And this is actually a pretty easy job, um, even though, uh, you know, at the dealer they want probably uh, almost $1,400 to do this work. All right, now let's get started. First thing we're going to do is remove this uh, this beauty cover right here to expose the engine or the beast beneath. Real easy. You just lift up on it, and it releases from these uh, these four spots. Um, pretty simple. Um, real easy. Our fuel injectors are going to be right underneath this. Uh, well, the upper intake. Then there's a lower intake underneath it. Um, but this is actually pretty easy to take apart. Um, we do have this PCV hose that runs right there. Uh, we have these pipes, but really we just undo these two. We have the air intake, a uh, couple connectors for the purge valve. Looks like the map sensor there, the throttle body. Um, actually pretty easy and this thing should come out uh, really quick. Also we have the brake booster hose back there. Um, actually it goes really, really quick. So let me show you. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is remove this map sensor connector. Easy enough. I'm going to leave the throttle body attached to the intake, I believe. So I'm going to pinch these, uh, pinch these two tabs. That releases. That wires off. Pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to remove the wire from the purge valve. Now I know what, you, what people are probably thinking. They're like, "Man, 2016. Why are you replacing injectors on something that new? Shouldn't that be under warranty?" Well, you would think, except for Honda only has, I believe, a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. This one's got 50-something on it, so it's out of warranty. And fuel injectors, and it's not just Honda, but fuel injectors are not considered powertrain. So we've removed the brake booster hose, which is right there, pretty easy. The PCV hose, set it aside. All right, I haven't got this hose off of the purge valve yet. I might actually just undo the little eight millimeter bolts there, but I also have to remove the intake snorkel right here and unplug the throttle body. Okay, unless you have a really tiny Phillips screwdriver, that's gonna be a tough one to get off. Uh, it's a five and a half millimeter. Unscrew it to loosen that up. All I need is a 12 millimeter now. I'm gonna remove these two.
Use a magnet. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is just loosen up these two 8 millimeter bolts that hold that purge valve on to get on the bolts there. Hmm. Can undo the air box here and let it kind of sit off to the side maybe. coolant doesn't go into this plastic intake but I really doubt it does throttle body's a little bit dirty I'm going to clean that up um, but at this point, since nothing's holding this intake on, I can take the intake all the way off. Just make sure all your seals are still there. Uh, these are all 12s here for this lower intake. The injectors and fuel rail are going to be underneath it. This thing's still pretty warm. There's a damper to dampen some of the sound that comes through the fuel rail. There's also this cover right here that covers up the high pressure fuel pump. We're going to have to undo the lines here in order to get the fuel rail out. There's also a fuel rail pressure sensor here and then I believe there's one right there. I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, so I got to get a 10 on that one. And here comes my trusty 10 on a stick. I love this thing. If you've seen any of my other videos, I use it all the time. That's pretty simple right there. This one damper here, you can see all the insulation they use. And that's to try to keep the ticking noise from this high pressure fuel pump um, to kind of keep it at bay. It looks like I'm going to have to take the fuel lines off of the pump and disconnect the harness here. I'm not even quite sure how it disconnects for the fuel pressure sensor there. Or that's the, uh, that actually is the uh, pressure control solenoid there. But uh, as you can see, there's 10, 10 millimeter headed uh, nuts and bolts there that kind of hold the fuel rails down. All right, here's a tip. Whenever you're going to break these fuel uh, rail fittings on any direct injected or really any fuel injected vehicle, but especially direct injection, these things run probably close to uh, five, between 500 and 1500 PSI. Um, so a lot more than your typical port fuel injection engine. Uh, so as soon as you crack those lines open, if that thing's got a ton of fuel pressure behind it, uh, I've seen it hit people in the eye. So safety glasses. All right, just kind of break them loose. You can kind of hear it hissing and spraying out the back. Got some fuel pressure behind it. All right, as you can see, there's a lot of fuel pressure here. It's bleeding off. There it goes. Man, that hissed for a while. All right. Let's get these fuel lines undone unbolt the fuel line Ooh.
and another. And you can see this wire comes up right between the two fuel lines. I'm going to remember that so I can get that in the right spot. And you got to be careful you don't you gotta be careful not to drop these bolts down the intake because then you're going fishing. And if it goes past the valve, then you're really hosed. Getting these things unplugged might prove to be a little bit unplugged. Might prove to be a little challenging. Okay, there's one. Just kind of peel it back. Okay, that's not so bad. Okay, that's unplugged. Now I want to make sure I pull them straight up because the injectors are pretty long. You'll see that in a second. Okay, that didn't work like I hoped. Well, I'm learning as I go here. Alright, so there's those fuel rails. I'm going to make sure I blow them out. Those are pretty small little nozzles. I want to make sure these fuel rails are definitely clean before I put it back together. Okay, so these injectors here twist them a little bit but I want to make sure I pull them as straight out as I can even though I guess I'm replacing them so it doesn't really matter they got quite a bit of carbon on the tips of them I don't know if you can see that or not there's a ton of carbon on the tips that's kind of a problem that that some companies have with direct injection is the carbon problem all right See, these fuel injectors are a little bit different than your typical port fuel injector. These things are quite a bit longer because uh, they extend all the way down into the combustion chamber and you can see the little Teflon seal that they got right there. Boy, this number one didn't really want to come out. There we go. bit of prying there we go okay I'm not even going to take that one all the way off just because that's kind of a pain in the butt but let's still get these injectors off and out now bank 2 is the one setting all the problems especially this cylinder right here I believe this is cylinder 4 either that or this one depending on how they number them. We'll see which one looks like it's full of carbon. Yeah, it's got a little bit. We're going to save that one to compare to this one. <clears throat> Yeah, that one, I'm wondering if that's cylinder four, because there's quite a bit of carbon right around the pentel there, or the very tip of the injector. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more content like this, please hit subscribe, and uh, I'll get more content up as soon as I can. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section. I'll answer them back.